Necromancers are very good vampires. Today I'm going to showcase you the solo Necromancer vampire build for the Greymore chapter. Timestamps like always in the description below and if you're looking for a written guide it's like always on AukusHQ.com. Link in the description as well. The reason why I actually like Necromancer with a vampire setup is you can generate ultimate faster than other setups because you can kind of drain energy from dead bodies and therefore you will have a higher uptime on the vampire lord which is kinda OP. On top of that just the whole theme fits really well together in my opinion. But let's take a look at the stats real quick so there's nothing really important or like I mean we have a lot of Max Magica, almost 40k, which is really nice. Health. Health is pretty much the only important stat here that you should take a look at. Make sure to be around 19 to 20k, because that will save you from a lot of one-shots. Stamina is fairly low, but then keep in mind when we actually transform into a Vampire Lord in difficult situations, we will get 10,000 extra Magica, Health and Stamina. So that bumps up our stats like crazy. Very low magic recovery because we are running a specific set. I will tell you in a second how to actually increase this number in case you need more sustain. The lover Mundo Stone, you want extra spell penetration just to boost your overall damage. Very important. First, let's take a look at the buff food and potions because a lot of people forget these and it's one of the most important aspects in Elder Scrolls Online. So if you don't know or if you have never used potions or buff food, it's the first thing you actually should do research on. For this particular setup, I'm using Mistral Banana Bunny Hash. <laughs> kind of sounds funny. You can buy this one at the guild store. A stack of 100 costs like 4k gold. It's super cheap to get. Boost your max health and max magicka. You could also use long fin pasty with melon sauce so you get more health, stamina and magicka. Also very cheap in the guild store. Or witch modus potent brew which gives you max magicka, max health and magicka recovery. So in case you have sustain issues you could use this one, because it will boost your magical recovery like crazy. Now just to showcase you, when we are actually buffed up, we have around 1100. And when I use this buff food, it goes up to 1.6k. That's, that can make a huge difference in terms of sustain. Next up, I want to talk about corrupting and purifying bloody Mara. These are like vampire specific drinks. The purifying one, uh, when we read the middle text, if you're a vampire, the blood in this drink will also purify you, reducing your stage by one. This one, corrupting Bloody Mara, boosts the vampire stage to four. Currently, we are stage four, and as you can see, it's like slowly declining. And when this reaches zero, we will be stage three. But with the buff food, we can bump it up, no problem. You need to decide for yourself what stage you want to be in. But usually, because, like, when we are stage 4, our vampire abilities, including the ultimate, get a lot cheaper. So uh, that's why I actually recommend being stage 4 with this setup. But in the end, if you think the normal ability cost is too high, lower it down. You will get a sweet spot at some point. So that's about the buff food. You have a lot of options, make sure to get all these experiment around, with these three especially. Never play without buff food. Potions. Technically, you could use just the normal potions, however, Necromancer doesn't really have access to major sorcery or prophecy through class abilities. Now, why are these major buffs important? Major sorcery boosts your spell damage by 20%. And Major Prophecy boosts your spell damage by 10%. That's a buttload of extra damage. If you don't have these two buffs, you're playing the game wrong. Now, potions is one way, so either Essence of Spell Power. I have the ingredients on the website on how to craft these. Or the Alliance Spell Draught. 
which you can get from the Cyrodiil vendor. And you can buy them for alliance points. Now they're like these here are very expensive, so you don't really need to use them for all content. It's mostly for difficult content or when you have like a boss fight, you probably want to get these buffs. Now, in case you can't afford any of these po potions, what do you do? There is skills that provide the same buffs. But because we have a specific setup, these skills don't really fit on here if you want to play the optimal setup. However, we can have like kind of a trade-off when we go to the Mage's Guild. You have Inner Light. This one gives you Major Prophecy, 10% extra spell crit when you have it slotted. And you also get more Max Magicka, 5% and another 2% from the Magicka controller if you slot it. So instead of, for example, Hypnosis, this is our like AoE stun, you could run Inner Light here to get that very strong buff. And on the back bar, that generation. This is a damage over time effect, and it has a secondary effect, which gives you major sorcery, increasing your spell damage by 20%. So you could replace Beckoning Armor, for example. That's when you don't use these potions. Once again, inform yourself about that stuff. It's the most important thing, and a lot of people don't use it properly. One more thing about potions, level up alchemy, get medicinal use, because the potions will res will last 30% longer. So instead of having a 33 second uptime, you will get a 47 second uptime. And the potion cooldown is 45 seconds, therefore giving you 100% of these OP buffs. Next up, race. It doesn't really matter what you run. You can be a high elf, a Breton, an Argonian, a dark elf, a Kashid, whatever floats your boat. Obviously, if you want to pick the top performers, you probably want to go for a high elf or a Breton, but pretty much anything works. The reason why I usually pick a high elf is we get 258 spell damage. That's a lot of extra spell damage. 2k max magicka and then a little bit extra sustain through spell recharge. Just overall really good stats. If you need more sustain, especially with a vampire which has cost increase, you could also run a breton which gives you overall 7% cost reduction on spells. Now let's take a look at the vampire abilities. I use three in total. The ultimate, swarming cyan, hypnosis, is like AoE stun, and an arterial burst, which is a direct damage spammable. If you want to use more, go for it. No problem. So to give you a quick overview, the ultimate itself it's very powerful, it gives you 10k max health, magicka and stamina, and it also heals you for 15% of all damage done. So it's just really strong. On top of that, you have a bat swarm around you that also deals damage. Let me just quickly showcase this to you. When we go in here, I drop stuff I can transform. No problem. Look at how much damage the bat swarm does. And my stats, 51k Magicka, 22k Stamina, 32k Health. Easy peasy. It's just a monster. And we can get the ultimate back up fairly quick, which is really nice. Artelier Burst, I've chosen this more simply because the other one drains health and you might kill yourself. <laughs> So if you're playing solo, I think the Magicka Morph will actually be a better option. You could replace this with a spammable. Up to you. But hey, this is a vampire build, so I guess we should use some vampire abilities. I don't use Simmering Frenzy because it drains health as well. And sure, you get a lot of weapon and spell damage, but the, the chance of dying is just pretty much too high. 
and they don't really have enough healing to really outdo the negative effects. So I don't, don't recommend using this. Empiric Drain, same thing. It doesn't deal enough damage for it to really be worth using. Now Hypnosis, on the other hand, this is like the AoE stun. When I... So when the enemies are looking at me, I activate this. They pretty much all get stunned. For quite long duration. And once the cooldown is over... After they're stunned, you can stun them again. Looks pretty cool and is very strong. So you get a lot less damage. Moist form, or moist form, how I like to call it. You could use it. But the thing is, while you're in the elusive mist or like the blood mist, you can't really deal any damage. But you also don't get a lot of damage. So experiment around if you want to use it. It gets more interesting in the passive section, first off. If you want to sneak around, like the movement speed penalty in stealth is gone. Pretty much walking at normal speed. When you're running for longer than 3 seconds, you turn invisible. As long as you keep sprinting. And we can sprint for a long time. That's only at stage 4 though, but that's pretty pretty cool. Basically enabling all the classes stealth mode. There is a lot of other nice freebies. Maybe Undeath is worth talking about. Reduces your damage taken by up to 30% based on your missing health. So the lower our health is, the more damage mitigation we get as well. Very nice feature. Let's just quickly about the vampire abilities. I will talk about the setup or the whole setup in a second. First, let's check out the gear. Now I want you to understand. I also do have a uh, advanced and the beginner setup on the website. There's a few options that you can run. This is just one specific setup that actually works well with this build. Like always, false god. No matter what, you don't need perfect version. You can just get the imperfect version from normal Sunspire. It's very easy to get. Normal Sunspire is not hard to clear. But obviously you need 12 people. The reason why this is so strong, even with the imperfect version, it, there's basically no difference. The only difference the perfect version has, it has 1000 extra max magicka, which basically is maybe 2-3% extra damage or even less, I'm not sure. The most important bonus, the 5 piece, is the same on the imperfect and perfect version people that actually read tooltips. Reduce the cost of your magic abilities by 8%. When an enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore 2150 magicka and gain major expedition for 8 seconds, increasing your movement speed by 30%. So whenever we kill monsters, we also get the speed buff, which is really nice. Maybe I can quickly showcase this when something dies here. So now I have speed buff on. Kill these. So in combat we are always fast. So we can avoid more damage and so on. That's pretty cool. Then we also get a lot of spell crit, spell damage and minor slayer as well. But the main thing is the cost reduction on this set is just unbeatable both on the imperfect and perfect version you don't need gold jewelry you don't need purple jewelry you can just get blue if you really want the difference between blue purple and gold is maybe five percent a lot of people think it's like a lot more but the truth is if you read the difference you will see the arcane trade increases maximum magic by 870 like with purple, it's maybe 800 or something. So you lose like 70 to 200 magicka. That's not a lot. It doesn't matter whether it's purple or gold or blue, really. Only thing that really matters is the weapons. They need to be gold. Everything else, blue, purple, gold, it doesn't matter, okay? If you're a min-maxer, sure, then it matters. 
but otherwise not. So that's the false god. Go get the imperfect version if you don't can if you can't get access to the perfect version. The second set is Kalurion. I've simply chosen this because it fits to the theme. If you want max damage, you just slap on Modus Sorrow, like always. But I feel like this set fits well to the vampire setup. What does it do? It gives you two spell crit and a spell damage, and then when you deal direct critical damage, with a single target magic ability, you launch a fire, ice, shock, or disease ball at your target that deals 17k damage. This is only single target, has a 10 second cooldown, deals a lot of damage. So if you want something more AoE, you could always swap it out with something else, but I like the proc effect, it looks super sexy. It's just nice to use. On the Nightblade Vampire setup, for example, I use Bahara's Curse, so we just have more healing. You could slap that thing on here as well. Would totally work, no problem. Just trying to diversify a little bit, because usually when I just copy-paste the same setups, even though they're best in slot, most people don't like them. Groftar. I use this because it's also even more AoE damage. When you deal damage, you have a 10% chance to create the lava pools that swirl around you, dealing 2600 flame damage to all enemies within 8 meters. I don't know, when I go to these guys here... You see, it in th the red circle is pretty much Groftar and it instantly procs pretty much. There we go, he dead. It's this circle. You don't like Groftar? Use another monster set. Anything works. I just feel like it fits nice into the theme. Yes, vampires don't like fire, but hey, you know, sometimes you gotta make compromises. And it also looks really cool. You could use Kjalnar's Nightmare, which has a pretty cool effect as well, and it fits to a Necromancer, which basically, when you light attack, Every every five or so, basically at five stacks, an undodgeable skeletal hand attacks your enemy after one second, knocking them into the air and stunning them for three seconds, dealing 20k magic damage. The reason why I didn't pick this one is because it's fairly hard to get from a DLC dungeon, whereas Groftar is from a base game dungeon, very easy to get. You could use Valkyrie Scoria, Narayan. And all that stuff, it works. Use whatever you want. I'm what I'm trying to say is false god is the only important set because that's where you get your sustain from, and everything else you can throw together what you want, pretty much. On the back bar, I have the Maelstrom Lightning stuff. Get it? It drops in normal Maelstrom Arena. You can use a fire stuff as well, a ice stuff as well. But as long as you have the set with the bonus, it's nice. So now what traits do I use? First off, I have 5 light, 1 medium, 1 heavy, all divines with magic enchantments on this setup. On the jewelry, I simply use arcane trade, so I don't need to transmute anything. You could use blood first, you're infused, all spell damage. And on the front bar, I have a shock enchantment, a shock stuff, and a precise weapon. You could also use Nernhound. But the precise weapon is nice because when we are actually fully buffed, we are at like 61%. If this said that we have one, two. Yeah, only one, two. Yeah, okay. Two of these, so we get like a 10 plus 10 critical boost in execute. So we're not over the cap. That's why I just simply use precise. Back bar infused with weapon damage enchantment because, like I always say, when we apply this and we weapon swap, it will keep proccing the enchantment on. The front bar. A lot of people don't know that, but that's how it works. Champion points. There's 300, 600 and max CP setup on the website. 44, 73, 23, 64, 66. Then you have 61, 61, 100 in Arcanist. 37, 11, 49, 49, 48, 43, 81. Pretty standard setup. Let's take 
a look at some of the really nice perks necros actually have in terms of passives so here when you use blast bones skeletal major spirit mender the next cost of blast bones major mender will be reduced by 50 percent cost really nice then that's what i mentioned before because we have two of these here we get 20 percent extra critical in execute that's really strong this member free spell penetration very nice as long as we keep up skeletal arcanist which is always there on the front bar then also increases your damage done with damage or time effects by 15 percent just like this these passives dude so overtuned compared to other classes jesus Whenever an enemy you are in combat with dies within 28 meters of you, restore 200 magic stamina. So with a bone tyrant ability slotted, for example, we have uh, necrotic or beckoning armor on the back bar. It reduces the damage you take from damage or time abilities while you have a bone tyrant active. Bone tyrant ability active. So we usually have our beckoning armor up, so that also works. And then we just get 1250 max health for free on that confederate so while you have the skeletal major the mender up you gain 200 magic recovery just like this so now we're at 700 i use my mender or my mage and we're almost at 1k okay is there something else yeah this is maybe nice to have because you get like extra ulti, but whatever. Yeah, the passives here are really strong. Guess you gotta sell the class somehow. Anyway, let's move on. Structure stuff, there's a... Right, focus, Jesus. I just want to talk about ancient knowledge. The difference between flame, shock and frost stuff. The reason why you use a lightning stuff is equipping a lightning stuff increases your damage done with area of effect abilities by 8%. It's just more AoE damage because we have a lot of AoE damage. We have these two AoE damage over time effects and the Blast Bone as well. And then when we do a heavy attack with the Shock stuff, it also deals quite a bit of damage. Plus it's very easy to actually regain Magicka. Compared to a Frost or a, or a Fire stuff which has a longer channel duration. That's why I prefer Shock Staves on solo builds. Light Armor. We get a lot of spell penetration, even more damage. A lot of spell crit like this for free. This one, whatever. And then we get a buttload of magic recovery and magic cost reduction. So these here are also very strong. If you can afford it, because if we run one heavy piece, get Chakronon, so it boosts up 2% extra health. Then you want all the vampire passives, like I just mentioned. Undaunted, get Undaunted Metal. 6% overall resources because we have light, heavy and armor, uh, light, medium and heavy armor pieces. That's three different types. So we get 6% more max health, stamina magicka, just like this. Like I mentioned before, if you don't want to use the expensive potions, you can use inner light or dead generation. Okay, the racial passives and alchemy medicinal use. So the setup. The Skeletal Arcanist, like I just mentioned, it keeps the passive active to give us more spell penetration and extra recovery. Plus, this thing deals a lot of damage. Stalking Blast Bones, this is kind of like your kamikaze bomber dude. Deals a lot of explosion damage, very strong single target and AoE wise. You always want to make sure to summon this once it explodes. Then we have Arterial Burst, this is our vampire spammable. Deals up to 50% more damage based on your missing health. So the lower our health goes, the more damage we does. And because we are a vampire, we will also take less damage when we are lower health. So it really it really combines well. And then if you use this ability while you are under 50% health, it will always be a critical strike. Nice. Hypnosis, this is your stun. Can be really nice. You could swap this out if you don't want to use it. Spirit Guardian, this is your main heal so the healing is lower on this setup than on other classes for example because we pretty much have the spirit guardian we have a shield though so when we're low health we can just shield up and wait till the spirit guardian heals us back up if you want more healing 
you could use like tether abilities and stuff like that that also heals you i don't know just to like you can drain this and then it will also heal that would be another option you have if you feel like healing is too low okay the ultimate like i just mentioned powerful really strong and the necrotic potency let's 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 actually get to the other ultimate so the nice thing with this setup is because you're a necro you can actually decide to transform into a swarming scion to a vampire lord or if you feel like it you can become a ravenous goliath as well whatever floats your boat same thing here almost 60k health 38k magic and tango stamina plus the aura actually drains health as well so like I have pretty much no healing active and it's not going lower because the thing just drains the enemy. That's another option you have. Now obviously if <laughs> well, if you just want to use Swarming Scion you could just use something else here. right? But I found it to be pretty cool to be able to swap between. And other players might be like what's that dude doing? Can't he decide? Beckoning armor, wrap yourself in hardened bone, granting you major resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5280 so we get less damage taken. And while active, enemies that strike you with a ranged attack will be pulled towards you once every 3 seconds. So because we are laying a big boy carpet on the ground here, that's basically the death zone. And we stand in here, people will automatically get pulled in as long as we have the beckoning armor active. And they will just die. So much damage. Necrotic potency, like I mentioned, you can activate this and then it drains the energy from the dead corpses to give you ultimate points. So that's how, when we have a trash pack and they all die, you can just drain all of them really quick and have Swarming Scion or the Goliath ready fairly fast. Harness Magic, this is your shield. In ESO, you need to learn one thing. Spam your shield and you will not die, pretty much. Or dodge roll. So yeah, shield, very strong. It bolsters your health. Always make sure to use it. Unnerving Boneyard, this is your AoE ability. Deals a lot of damage and it also applies Major Breach. So it reduces the enemy's spell resistance, so they take more damage. Unstable Ball of Storms, again, AoE damage, really powerful. Can also set the enemies off balance. When enemies set off balance, you regain twice the resources. So that's my setup pretty much. Like I mentioned, play around. If you want to use Scythe to actually have more healing instead of Hypnosis, go for it. It's not a problem. Like the Magic Amorph here works well because it actually deals magic damage and it gives you health back so if you feel like you need more healing voila there's just so much nice combinations available as a necromancer like jesus christ a few other important things so you need to learn to dodge roll a 100k one shot can turn into a zero damage hit because you can just dodge roll a lot of abilities on this, a bit, on this class, or on this setup, we don't have a lot of med stamina, but you could use long thin pasty to get more stamina if you're a dodge roll guy. So you can dodge roll more, and blocking the same thing. Blocking and shielding, it will mitigate so much damage. It's kind of crazy. To pretty much summarize, get buff food and potions. I have an article on the website as well, I'll put a link in the description that talks about like why these things are so important, in case you still did not understand. Go read it. Healing mostly comes from Spirit Guardian, or when Swarming Scion is active, or the Goliath. If you need more healing, you could run Hungry Scythe. The summons, you always have to keep them up, because... This one heals you, and this one gives you more damage, plus they also give you more recovery. 
So the summons are very active. They have a long duration, like 16 seconds. So it should be fairly easy to keep up. No problem. Then damage mitigation through beckoning armor. Very important. Life drain. Or, well, if the body's dead, I'm not sure if you can drain energy. Sub the lingering life. Okay, it's lingering life. There, I don't know, whatever. It's some roleplay stuff. At least you get ultimate points. Okay, that's the main point what I'm trying to say. Harness Magica. Your main defense. Shield up, block, or dodge roll. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The more you will play, the more used you will get to dodge rolling enemy abilities. And don't forget the carpet. Carpet very strong because it just deals so much damage you see it's just so much AOE damage with this setup is crazy in terms of sets false god get the imperfect version or perfect whatever you can get everything else you can adjust whatever you like I've just chosen Kalurion because like it deals a lot of single target damage and it fits well to the theme. And Groftar is a base game set. Whereas Kjalnar is DLC, which is also really nice. Let's take a look at the most important aspect of the build. The outfit. I don't have a helmet on, then the Groftar shoulder piece is normal Dremora glows, Dremora breaches, ancestral high elf stuff. Deadwater Jerkin, Dremora Sash, Dremora Shoes. All Cold Harbor Ash Black. Now, what? First off, it's the Vampire Stage 4, which makes you look like this. There's also a full guide on the website just to showcase how you actually can create a cool vampire and what you can do to actually hide the skin and so on, if you're interested in stuff like that. First off, I have the Barbaric Windblown Hair. It looks Fabulous. Head marking, I use face imprint of the Suchik order to get this glowy stuff. Major dormant, none. Body markings, it's again the imprint of Suchik order. Personality is the Thief. I think that's pretty much it with this. Yeah, and that's how I get this kind of look on the character. You could also like change the body marking to like a blood rune. So in case you don't like the glowy stuff that would also work but i feel like because this like the pale skin of the vampire you don't really see it well you could also use a skin if you really want to but honestly oh my god please no this one actually doesn't look bad yeah this one actually looks nice whatever floats your boat at least here you see the angry eyes right very important if you have any questions you can always join our community Discord or on twitch.tv slash alcashq where I live stream often and usually try to answer as much questions as possible. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the juicy like button. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.